Jan Berle tamed the beast as he held Adiban to a draw in round 7 of the Gibraltar Masters. Jan joins us in our studio. Jan, a draw against Adiban today, a level result, but the game was quite interesting. Yeah, it was an uh, interesting game. It was for a long time, it was uh, Fury, up to this uh, moment actually. Uh, we placed the Berlin uh, line, one of the critical lines. I knew that Adiban is a very aggressive player. So I could already guess that he would pick a very aggressive and sharp line. And yeah, I was well prepared. And yeah, on the 23rd move, I came with kind of a novelty, I think. That's quite uh, fascinating that you were able to guess his opening because you knew his playing style. And you were prepared till about the 24th move, pretty much, over here, Bishop G5. You had yeah. this in your prep already. This was prep and it's some, yeah, a tabia in Berlin. And if White really wants to get an advantage, uh, because it's all locked, the whole line, you know. And it's a very solid line, of course, for Black. And if you want to get an advantage, uh, you should play a critical move. So, and, yeah, this is a very sharp line. There's some good results from Gawain Jones, Luke McShane, who had some nice wins here. And there's some sharp ideas, of course. Here he wants to go Queen H4, there's a nasty pin. So he has sacrificed the pawn, but uh, he's got the two bishops here, as mm -hmm. well as your pawn structure is not that great. No, I have a terrible pawn structure <laughs> indeed, a very weak bishop and a nasty uh, pin here. Um, but of course, when I can get my knight to e4, then my problems are solved. Right, so black's aim is to play knight e4 here, but that's mm -hmm. not possible at the moment, because you just take on e4, which is why you went h6. Yeah. At first uh, sight, it looks like a ridiculous move. I'm wondering what's going on after bishop h6. <laughs> People guess probably that I'm a crazy man or something like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, the point is, of course, that uh, um, I already said it. If he takes, uh, it's what happened in the game. Then I first play queen e7. Uh, did he take instantly after bishop h6? Uh, after you played h6? Uh, yeah, there are not really other moves. So many there options. Are, yeah, because if he leaves uh, the the h4 d8 diagonal, then of course I can also play queen knight e4. There's you no jump. Pin. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. So after bishop h6, you went queen e7. Mm -hmm. So what was your point of this, uh, of giving back this pawn? Well, I kind of, I win a, a move here. Um, after queen e7, uh, on the next move I can play knight e4. There's no more pin. And um, if he goes back to g5, then I can play queen e5. Nice. And then on the next move again, knight e4. Right. Um, was h6 also something that you had prepared? I mean, was that or was that over the board inspiration? Well, he plays a lot of lines. He plays yeah. e4, he plays d4, and he, within all this e4 stuff, he plays also all kind of variations. <laughs> so there's Hard a lot to, to remember. Yeah. But um, uh, you had this pattern in your mind. I, I knew that h6 is um, we play for free results here, and I'm still very active. I'm still a pawn up and uh, he doesn't have the initiative anymore. And I surprised him, so best right. practical shot, I think. Right. Uh, in fact, he did uh, take some time after that for this move, Rook F1, almost 23 minutes. Yeah. Uh, so you did succeed in surprising him. Mm -hmm. And now after Rook F8, he comes back. But like yeah. you said, that you get your queen to E5 and your problems are more or less solved here? Um, I think so, yeah, because I'm still a pawn up, knight E4 is coming. Um, and after bishop f4, I play queen d4 check, and again, uh, knight e4 is coming. So maybe f nice to point out that um, after um, rook f1, I shouldn't go knight e4 uh, instantly, because then he takes and I'm losing the game after uh, rook f5 or rook f4. So rook g4 is the threat here and there's yeah. problem against. Yeah. So just to point it out, if something like e3, you can even take on g7 yeah. perhaps? Yeah, indeed. That's winning indeed. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. you just take on g7 and then... Yeah, rook g4. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very nice. So this was actually a little trap by Adiban that you can't go knight e4 here instantly. Yeah, I should play rook f8 and we analyzed uh, rook f5. And now I can't play uh, again knight e4. So um, the same, same idea reason. doesn't work again because? Yeah, then he, after this, he takes again here. And rook takes f5, uh, there's bishop f6 check. Right. Um, but rook f5, um, you sh shouldn't forget his own king. And I thought, yeah, what's he going to do? I didn't see it. And he neither saw what he should do here. Because white is threatening bishop g7 after rook f5. So rook f7 yeah. 
uh, you were happy with this position. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you evaluating this position at this moment? Did you know that you were fine already over yeah. the board? Uh, yeah, I had confidence in my position and um, I thought I was fine and let him come up with some new idea <laughs> and uh, I could uh, just rest and lay back and uh, yeah. Right, and then it just led to repetition and uh, yeah. a draw here. Happy with the, with the way things went today overall? Yeah, it's with black and against very strong uh, opponents, so I'm very happy. Yeah, and tomorrow again with the white pieces. So. You're on five out of seven. You're having quite a fantastic tournament so far. Uh, tell us, uh, how are you feeling about going into the final part of the event? Yeah, well, uh, of course, well, last year I had four and a half out of six, and I'm two times white, but I lost twice against Alexchenko and Gwen Jones. Okay. And then I spoiled everything. So I'd like to say, so far so good, <laughs> and nothing more. And, <laughs> Just play my games and we'll see how far I get. So. Uh, one game at a time, as they say. We wish yeah. you all the best and look forward to having you in our studio with us again. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you, Jan. Bye-bye.